Hello, this is Julia Bushkova, and today I'm going to show you a very cool and useful exercise for the left hand. Um, it is a multi-purpose exercise, and you will see in a moment what it does. Uh, number one goal of it is to strengthen the pinky. So, um, as we all know, uh, a lot of, especially younger students, uh, play with the fourth finger, the pinky, that goes on the string in this manner. Of course, we're talking about double-jointed people. So, that is probably very familiar to many of you. Uh, if you want to get rid of it, uh, you can. And this exercise is a really fantastic shortcut to a really nice and what I call supported pinky, which will function as it's supposed to from the base joint and not like in this shape. It has to function up mostly because it a lot of times cannot even go back. It gets sort of stuck in there in that position. Um, I call this exercise a Milstein exercise. Uh, the reason for that is uh, very simple. I learned uh, about it from a former student of Nathan Milstein many, many years ago. But later I also found out that some people, uh, some teachers in Russia used it. Somehow my teachers did not know about it, so I never learned it when I should have learned it when I was young and trying to get rid of my problem, because I had the same problem. Uh, and now only learned it later and started using it right away in my pedagogical practice. So here how it goes. Uh, first, you will insert the violin between your index and second, what we call second finger, like right there. Then you will position your hand, not in what feels to you a first position, but what will feel to you as a second position, right there. Then you lower, so the violin is really there, so you can do it also without the shoulder rest, plenty fine, uh, because it's really supported on your collarbone and in the hand. The violin is very low, or your hand is very high, whichever way you want to, to put it. Uh, as you can see, I have a long thumb, but with any thumb it will be quite high and visible, and that's where it's supposed to be. Uh, so then you lower your second finger, and then you can check and that is a little too high, so here I landed almost on the D, uh, very sharp, and so we want to move the whole hand, not just the finger, but the whole hand, to the C sharp. Okay, so if, let's say, I was very low, again, I would do the same thing, I will move the whole hand into that, um, what to me would feel at this point as a second position, so... So that will be here, and again, you don't really need the bow. Uh, your second finger is here, then you will put your third finger nearby to the D. And then, depending on how, uh, how weak your fourth finger is, if it's very weak, you might want to put it on the E flat. If it's not as weak, you might want to try to put it on the E natural, but then you have to see that it doesn't buckle at all. So just keep supported. On E flat, it is supported by 99.9% .9 of all students. So again, let's look at this. The thumb here has to stay completely relaxed. That is one of the purposes of this exercise. It teaches division of what works and what rests. And so the thumb is relaxed. It can be completely off like this, like where it just hang stays. But you can also, I suggest that you also kind of touch the neck. So you do have the feel of where it is. And it's, of course, very, very forward. Uh, the hand is not stuck very uh, hard, but it's movable again. Your wrist is straight. You want to have it straight, so you want to avoid this, of course, or that. Okay, so it's a neutral position of the wrist. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I play the C sharp, then I play D. At that point, my second finger stops pressing, of course, right? Then you press uh, the E flat, and then you work with your fourth finger from this joint, off and back on, and off and basically relaxed, completely relaxed finger, and then on, off and on. And that pushes it, puts it into the right position completely. 
uh, uh, so this exercise, then you can take a bow and can do, for instance, uh, a little bit of sound. If it's really slow, I would suggest to spring off very fast, as if you have touched hot, something really hot, but then relax. And then sometimes, if it's really relaxed, it can even slightly droop like that, which is, again, it's okay, but before you go back on, you will get it back and land with purpose, and then, of course, immediately let go of that pressure if you don't really play with the bow. So again... Next thing you can do in the same position, you will put it, without the bow maybe, um, a little bit sharper, just a tiny bit sharper. So with the bow, it will sound really out of tune. So it's a, I would call it a dirty E flat. Then a little bit sharper, then a little bit sharper, and then eventually you get to the E, which is your, and the finger shape will keep. Okay, so meanwhile, all right, so what do we do? That's all wonderful. The thumb is relaxed, the fingers are independent, but then what? Then, uh, still with the E flat, by the way, it's very possible, and I do a lot with my students with E flat. So what you do, you keep what I call, keep the places of the tips of the fingers on the string, but do not press much at all. And then you will go under the neck, just like that. So all of that is quite relaxed, but it's there. Under the neck, the first finger gets here, and then slowly you get a little bit up, but not as much anymore. You will have the space, and the thumb is still profoundly forward, profoundly forward. Of course, we don't play like that, so then you allow the thumb to return, but not all the way back, where most likely you had it before, <laughs> or your student had it before. Um, so that is your new first position. So with the first finger be feeling pulled back, that's your first position, okay? So what do we observe? We observe that the wrist is not made out of steel, but it's a very nice human wrist that each finger only works when it presses down the string. The fourth finger is in a nice supported shape, and you are all set. And you always have what my, my teacher used to call it for us when we were little, a window. That's a nice word. You have a window. Always open, never squeezing, which is the case when the thumb is back. When the thumb is here, you can't quite squeeze. So that's another huge advantage. So this is in a nutshell the exercise, what I call the Millstein exercise. Uh, once you progress to uh, this shape in a, natural, uh, in a natural way and in your first position already, um, you could play, for instance, I recommend to play either Shevchik or Shradik with the E-flat to modify it for the, to the E-flat so you don't have to be sitting in the exercise, exercise position and not ever play with the first finger for too long. So hear it again, very quickly, you lower it, I call it swimming under, uh, and then you slowly hear from this, uh, this angle. So here we're lowering it, everything is relaxed. Position the first finger back there with a big space, thumb is here, and then you move the thumb again slowly to what looks to you from here to the second finger. In fact, it will be between first and second, all right? So here's this, and of course, as you get stronger, and you can do that here, you can lower yourself into the in natural position and work the same way already there. So support it forth. The main thing, of course, is you're closer. This joint must be closer to the neck in order to succeed, uh, not too far away. But with time, you would be able to be more, much more further away, and still, as you can see, uh, have a nice, a functional supported fourth finger. Thank you. Be sure to subscribe, to like, and I will see you again in my next video.